There's a lot of benefits of being an IndyCar fan. Free live streams of practice and qualifying, new and innovative camera and camera angles, countless free content and even full race uploads on their YouTube channel, and very cheap and affordable race tickets, especially compared to NASCAR and Formula One. But one thing IndyCar fans, including me, have been waiting years for is an IndyCar game. I'm talking about a game for console like Xbox and PlayStation. There is racing simulators for the PC, but for a smaller budget person or somebody who can't invest the time into learning how to build and to work a PC, that could be a little bit frustrating. The last IndyCar game was made a while ago inside 2005. Since then, there's been many games for the Xbox and the PlayStation that have tried to replicate the IndyCar series. Many like Grid Autosport, Gran Turismo, and most recently Forza. But none of them have come close to their expectations. From only having one aero kit, very unrealistic physics, to even the fact that you can reach 235 miles per hour at Indianapolis Motor Speedway in the road course aero kit, which is just impossible. But there's one game coming out this year that looks promising to fulfilling many of the expectations that we've wanted inside an IndyCar based game, and that is Project Cars 2. Project Cars 2 is a game devoted to giving console gamers a simulator-like experience with the ease of a console game. And coming to Project Cars 2 is the full list of official Verizon IndyCar series cars and liveries from the 2016 season. Not only do they have the liveries from the 2016 season, but they also have both the Speedway Aero Kit and the Road Course Aero Kit. This is the first time that I've seen this inside a recent game. Normally they either have the Speedway Aero Kit like Great Autosport had, or they only have the Road Course Aero Kit like Forza has. They will also be including 6 current tracks that we have on the IndyCar schedule starting from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Long Beach, Sonoma, Watkins Glen, Road America, and a very welcome surprise, Texas Motor Speedway, which is the first time that I'm seeing Texas Motor Speedway outside of a NASCAR game in such a long time. It's gonna be very exciting to be able to kinda of simulate these six tracks that we have inside the game that are actually on the IndyCar schedule. Especially the fact that we have more than Indianapolis as an oval, we also have Texas Motor Speedway. The other thing is that we don't have just these six tracks to run on. We could run the Indy cars basically anywhere inside the world that we want to. We could run it at Spa, we could run it at Monaco, we could run it at old tracks that Indy cars been to in the past, like Master Raceway, Laguna de Seca. We could run it at Monza which is another interesting thing they have the old version of Monza that was an oval yes Monza does have an oval layout before they have the normal Grand Prix layout that they use for Formula 1 now and if you are able to run that oval inside the normal rotation which is counterclockwise which the IndyCar series always runs and basically every oval track runs that way then that could be up to three ovals that we could have, plus a fourth oval, which is Daytona International Speedway, which it'll be interesting to see any cars go back there again. Any cars never actually been there. They've been there for testing on the sports car configuration, which takes part of the road course. But it would be very interesting to see how the any cars go around Daytona in more of a simulator type physics game. The other exciting news is that we have an IndyCar veteran, James Hinchcliffe, giving feedback on the handling of the game. There's an article on the Project Cars 2 website where they ask questions to James Hinchcliffe and they ask him about how the car handles and how it feels. And he said that the thing was very spot on, only a couple of minor differences inside the car but from where it was then? He said that it was pretty spot on. So the fact that the car was very spot on before they even got the feedback from James Hinchcliffe means that this is gonna be a very accurate IndyCar game. And so now that they have the feedback from both 
driver and Long Beach Grand Prix winner James Hinchcliffe, we're going to be able to have a much more immersive experience inside Project Cars 2. And I'm definitely going to be excited to see how they deliver and to see if they really meet my expectations. Project Cars 2 is releasing September 22nd and I'm very excited to see how this team is going to deliver. It's going to be in both career modes and inside free play modes. So I'm going to be really excited to see in different ways that I can have fun in the indie cars, whether it's from a official indie car track or somewhere else inside the world. If you're going to get Project Cars 2, let me know why you're going to get it. Let me know if you're excited that they're going to be having the indie cars inside the game. Let me know if you think it's going to be a lot better than they were inside previous console games. And also let me know if you enjoyed this video by leaving a like on it. And as always, this is Drayden from DK Motorsports and I'll see you guys later.